People wonder why I do not do the ceremony of the mandatum, the washing of the feet, on Holy Thursday. There's a number of reasons for this. The first is, it's optional to begin with. Uh, the main reason, though, uh, well, sorry, one of the main reasons, though, is that it has lost its significance because of the opening of the washing of feet to women, and if I recall correctly, even non-Catholics. There is a real important symbolism uh, to the mandatum, which is lost by that. But most importantly, because for many people it has become the focal point of Holy Thursday instead of what is really important. When you look for illustrations, for example, in bulletins and online, very often you see that as the focus, and that is not the focus of Holy Thursday. But I do believe it's worth speaking about. The Holy Eucharist is a sacrament, while the washing of the feet is only a symbol. Yet while it is only a symbol, it is a symbol of something that is very important. The incarnation and paschal mystery of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the mandatum, the washing of the feet, we see a visual representation of what St. Paul will write about in his Christological canticle in his epistle to the Philippians, one of the most important passages of the New Testament, in which Christ is said to lay aside his glory, his divine glory, so that he may become incarnate and then shed his blood on the cross for the sake of his bride, the church. So in the divesting of himself and tying on the towel at the Last Supper, we see Christ putting aside his divine glory and clothing himself with the garment of a servant, that is, our human flesh. In the washing of the apostles' feet, we see Christ dying on the cross for our sake, for the sake of washing away our sins. St. Peter understood this as a ritual washing before ordination, which is why he asks that his head and hands also be washed. Many people correctly recognize that the symbolic act is a reflection of service of the priesthood, but what most modern Catholics do not realize is what that service actually entails. At the Last Supper, our Blessed Lord institutes the Catholic priesthood. The service of this priesthood is for the salvation of God's people. And so what then is salvation? If we look at all the ways that salvation is spoken about in the New Testament, it can be very simply summarized by union with God. We've spoken before about the fact that uh, in our Lord's Paschal Mystery, he, the new Moses, institutes a new Passover in which he himself is the Lamb who is offered, which inaugurates a new Exodus, complete with its new or with its heavenly manna, the very body and blood of our Lord himself, which he offers at the Last Supper, and then on the cross, with the new law that is the preaching of our blessed Lord, particularly the Sermon on the Mount, and a heavenly promised land. In the first Exodus, we see that God was constantly exacerbated, sorry, exasperated and often enraged by the failure on the part of the, of the Israelites to respond to his desire for union and a relationship. They refused to love him the way that he was loving them. And God desires a similar and an even greater relationship with us. And what does that relationship entail? What does our union with God actually mean? Very simply, to put it in the words of St. Paul to the Ephesians, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Or to use the more technical language of the uh, theology of the teaching, the governance, and the sanctifying functions of the church. In other words, that we accept him as Lord, and therefore those he has given his authority to, that we accept and believe down to the smallest detail, whatever it is that he has revealed and taught us, and that we participate in all the means of salvation, of sanctification that he offers us, particularly in the sacraments. Therefore, if I am at the service of your salvation, my role is to exercise that authority for your benefit, to teach you well, and to offer you those means of sanctification, especially the sacraments of penance and reconciliation, that is confession, and of course, the Holy Eucharist. Now, 
There are many things that a priest can do to foster, a, on a human level, his relationship with his people. Every priest is different, with different personalities, different interests, talents, etc. As priests, we should do our best to foster that relationship so that our ministry is more effective. Uh, but this is extremely difficult because of our humanity. By our humanity, I don't just mean the priest's humanity. But it is impossible to be liked by everyone or to meet everyone's expectations of their priests, especially if they don't understand what this service entails. But as the saying goes, expectations are a premeditated disappointment. I am here to serve your salvation, and sometimes that means helping you grow in patience. But to conclude, I just want to emphasize again that all of the things that a priest does, of all these things, the most important is the Holy Eucharist. It doesn't matter what else people desire. What is most important is that the Holy Eucharist and the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is celebrated as worthily as possible, that the place for that celebration is worthy of our Lord as possible, that the Blessed Sacrament is available to you to, uh, so that you can visit Him as often as possible, uh, and that you are as disposed as possible to worthily receive the Holy Eucharist. There are many things that we can as Catholics do and should do, but the worship of the Holy Eucharist is the most important. God desires the most intimate of relationships with each one of us, and there is no more intimate contact with God in this life than in the Holy Eucharist. Worship, receive, and adore.